think the deer are wearing Kevlar vests. Gun violence is an epidemic. Are you proposing taking away their guns? Yes. Enough prayers. Time for some action. You want to take everyone's guns away? Bingo. Enough prayers. Time for some action. We're going to take your AR-15. We're not going to give up. We'll find you. We'll find you. We'll find you. That's right. Some gun control updates. The uh, subject matter continues to evolve. I, real quick, wanted to bring everybody's attention. I thought this was a great exercise in um, media literacy here, especially news media literacy. Guns, if you want to pop up that... It's already uh, there, brother. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool vibe. Well, if you... Um, th- this popped up from the Hill, and they were reporting... Uh, on the Maryland mass shooting that was uh, happening at the time. Uh, well, when was this? I believe this was yesterday. yesterday yeah. And the original headline, oh, I am not seeing it. I must have a big delay. Oh, there it is. Uh, the original headline was multiple victims reported in mass shooting in Maryland town. But it caught my eye immediately that mass shooting was in, air, was in quotes, quotation marks. Um, which when you're on a mainstream news outlet, as long as there's some modicum of sort of journalistic integrity, when something is in quotes like that, it means they are not making that claim. They are pulling it from someone else. And uh, I thought to myself, strange, why are they sort of hedging their bets on this using the term mass shooting? And, of course, we know the official definition of mass shooting is a shooting in which four or more people are shot, uh, casualties. Is not four necess- or five? I believe it's four. Okay. Four or more uh, who are hit during the event uh, is a mass shooting. And I thought to myself, that is very strange. That is very strange that The Hill is uh, hedging their bets, making sort of a, mm, a point to put the term mass shooting in quotation marks. Uh and, you know, I, I took a screenshot. I just wanted to keep an eye on it because you're usually as things evolve, uh, you can get a little bit more information. Well, we did because later on they updated the article. And the headline now is three dead, one critically injured in Maryland mass shooting. Mass shooting now, not in quotation marks. So I believe that they were holding off on taking the quotation marks off, they still wanted to use the term mass shooting because it's a good headline grabber, gets people all riled up, it continues the narrative of mass shootings. It was too early for them to confirm whether it was or it was not a mass shooting. Um, but turns out three dead, one critically injured. That does officially confirm that it is a mass shooting and the they took off the quotation marks now they're not a whole they, i don't have a big rabbit hole uh earth shattering analysis but i thought it was a great example it's a good object lesson for everybody out there because of course the one of the main missions of this show is to help um you know everybody get a grasp on Media news media literacy. What exactly are you looking at um, with the words they use, the punctuation they very specifically uh, use in headlines and articles? And this was an example uh, in the first version of the uh, mass shooting in quotations, where at that moment it was not a mass shooting. It wasn't that they could not confirm that it is a mass shooting. But they really wanted to put that in their headline. And so they used little quotation marks. And uh, in this case, it did turn out to technically being a mass shooting. And so they edited it. Um, But somebody, you could very easily read that headline, not pay attention to the quotation marks, and just go on being affected um, with an unconfirmed event. Uh, in this case, it did get confirmed, uh, but you know it's just a, a wonderful little trick that they can use to uh, hedge their bets, kind of release themselves from the liability or responsibility, um, and allows them to use a much more inflammatory headline than the facts currently show. Um, and that's that. Now on to the important stuff. 
This is over here, KTLA mirrored on MSN. The headline is, House Passes Sweeping Gun Package, the Protecting Our Kids Act in Largely Party Line Vote. Protecting Our Kids Act. Who wouldn't vote for the Protecting Our Kids Act guns? It's a genius piece of uh, Why not children? Why is it kids? Protect the Children Act. Oh, that is an interesting idea. Yeah, kids Mm. is a little bit informal for a Mm -hmm. piece of legislation. Yeah. The House passed a sweeping gun package on Wednesday in response to last month's shooting in Buffalo, New York, and Uvalde, Texas, which killed more than 30 people and reignited the push for firearm legislation on Capitol Hill. uh, Real quick, I don't want to be too picky with this, Gons, but 19... Was it 19 killed in Uvalde, or was it 21? I guess it was 19 kids and 19 kids, yeah. 19 kids to adults, Two 10 adults. in Buffalo. So yeah, okay, it was 31, 31 people, yeah. And yeah, which I guess technically, more than 30. yes, technically is more than 30. So there you go. They, they uh, wanted the 33. They want the 33 thing, but it w- didn't quite get there. So they'll just say over, you know, more than 30. Yeah. So keep it ambiguous. If you say more than it 30, could be 33, right. you know, <laughs> it could be. <laughs> oh, but we do know the exact number. Why not just say 31? No. But okay. The package dubbed the Protecting Our Kids Act passed in a tw- tw- uh, 223 Three to, to 200. Two oh. 223 to 204 vote. One Republican did not vote. Ooh, weird. Uh, Two Democrats, Representative Jared Golden in Maine and Kurt Schrader in Oregon, bucked the party in opposing the measure. Five Republicans, uh, Representatives Adam Kissinger, Anthony Gonzalez, Brian Fitzpatrick, uh, Chris Jacobs, and Fred Upton, supported it. And uh, this is interesting. We, we need a little bit more details, but they're saying two Democrats bucked the party in opposing the measure. So they, okay, so you had Democrats opposing the Protecting Our Kids Act. They don't want to protect it. Uh, but we had five Republicans cross the lines and supported it. The legislation consists of seven separate provisions aimed at addressing gun violence in America. The House voted on the individual provisions separately. Uh, aimed at addressing gun violence. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. The House voted on the individual provisions separately, all of which cleared the chamber in mainly party line votes. The overall package, however, is the only legislation that will be sent to the Senate for consideration, where it faces GOP opposition. Horrible GOP Abide. people Ooh, trying to opposition. destroy our country. They don't want to protect their kids. A bipartisan group of senators have been engaged in their own negotiations to come to a consensus on the narrower gun legislation. And it goes into uh, Trump. Trump! To Trump. Uh, oh, no, they just put a little ad right there in the middle of this. Uh, it makes it uh, look paragraph. like it's part of the paragraph. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, exactly. The House package would raise the minimum age for buying a semi-automatic weapon from 18 to 21, prohibit civilian use of a- ammunition magazines with more than 15 rounds, that's a problem, and enact new federal criminal offenses for gun trafficking and straw purchases of firearms when an individual who is unable to pass a background check buys a gun through a proxy. It also seeks to require that ghost guns, firearms that are untraceable and do not have serial numbers undergo background checks and receive serial numbers (laughs) sure (laughs) you know cool you're gonna 3d print a gun at home folks it's now the law you you better better let the government know or follow the law uh impose a ban on bump stocks for civilians and bolster storage of guns in homes where minors may have access to the firearm Additionally, the package compels the attorney general to submit a report to congressional committees on the individuals who are deemed ineligible to purchase a firearm by a background check. This is a weird one. Uh, The attorney general has to submit a report to Congress on those who didn't pass the background check. Are they, yeah, are they worthy enough to be uh, another one of our controlled... 
children. But who, why? Yeah, why? Well, they need to. Why, they, if you fail a background check and you try to purchase a gun, do they have to send it to Congress? Because they what need. What is Congress going to do about it? They're not a law enforcement organization. Well, the, I mean, you know, they got to influence the laws to prevent these weird, people. It's or weird. Something. There's, yeah. there, it is a really mysterious part of it and really sus to me. Passage of the legislation comes just over two weeks after a shooter. Yep, yep, yep. America is in the midst of a shocking gun violence epidemic. Yeah, weird. It just kind of starts happening out of nowhere on a uh, election year. Mm, and it just kind of keeps going. Bunch of quotes, bunch of quotes from everybody. Nancy Pelosi gets in there. Uh, Jim jumps Jordan. down here. Yeah. Most Republicans, however, were not on board with the overall package. In a memo to House GOP lawmakers on Tuesday, Minority Whip Steve Scalise's office recommended that members of the conference vote against the legislation, arguing that the measure egregiously violates law-abiding citizens' Second Amendment rights and hinders Americans' ability to defend and protect themselves and their families. On the House floor on Wednesday, Representative Jim Jordan, the ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee, committee reiterated that stance and then there's two paragraphs of him reiterating the exact thing we just read <laughs> some republicans have called for measures to increase school security and et cetera, et cetera. republicans bad um so there is some things in there that are actually quite problematic um some things that are kind of useless some things that are pretty problematic um now this was just the house vote right. which look God bless our representatives, but the House is kind of, the House is where the theater happens. It's The House is kind of a virtue signal by the lizard people. Uh, when things pass the House, people get to get excited that a step has been made, that uh, the government is making progress, that they're taking an issue seriously. And if it passes the House, they they get to throw up some confetti and say we're doing something. Um, and usually things die on the vine at the Senate. This, of course, you know, for legislation to pass, it has to pass in both houses. And um, uh, analysis after analysis of this that I've read... <clears throat> Nobody is taking seriously the idea that this will pass the Senate. Uh, the Just the makeup of the Senate right now generally would not have the votes to pass this into law. And the Senate is a little bit more on the receiving end of the... The benefits to our politicians that are provided by lobbying groups... So, you know, if you consider the gun lobby, a very powerful lobby with a lot of money to make a lot of things happen, most of the senators, especially Republican senators in this case, are going to be on the take. Um, and some Democrats, by the way, I believe Manchin is a big uh, gun lobby guy and possibly cinema as well. So, uh, you know, it is one of these things where it is passing the House will inflame the situation. Um, I've already started getting all the emails from the, you know, the, the firearm newsletter people telling, you know, trying to get my money. If I don't make a $100 donation, then... <laughs> yeah. If you this, don't give you know, money, this, then you're going to lose your guns, mm -hmm. man. This right. is how this works. I got I to gotta donate to the cause or else the Senate is going to take away my guns. Um, <laughs> as it stands now, unless there's some sort of upset or error, uh, oh my gosh, would it be surprising if this passed the Senate. Um, but, you know, weirder things have happened in the past couple of years, Guns. Well, they're going to try to spin up a, a few more of these probably leading into... Mm -hmm. uh, it feels like they already uh, had the big one. You know, they, they I think the, you've all... Uvalde, right? Yeah. Uvalde uh, was sort of the pinnacle of creating that conversation. So, because obviously they, you know, they got to the house here. But yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I, I mean, don't it, think was, it, gets... it was the kickoff. Yeah. Did you uh, shut yourself off there on video? Yeah. That... Sorry. Hold on. I'm having some issues. Sure. Here. It just covers up half the screen. So, you know. I'm, I'm just... sorry. I'm sorry. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Well, um, let's move on. 